Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to go through my general photo selection process after an event, a large event where I shoot maybe a thousand to three thousand photos. And then in the end of the video I'll also give you a, t a couple extra tips on how to cut this process down when shooting these events. Stay tuned! <laughs> So just to start off, uh, over the last 20 years I've shot many events where during the day I'll shoot 1,000 to 3,000 photos. I like to shoot a lot of images during the day, especially at these events. In the past, what I used to do before I knew what to do, um, I would actually get a pad of paper and write down the numbers of all the images that I liked and then go through and manually select them and manually put them into folders and do this sort of thing when I would uh, have to do selection. And after shooting a full day of photos and trying to do this, it would take way too long, maybe even a day or two sometimes. Um, and it would just not be proper for the type of work I do now with uh, companies like Red Bull and things like that, where images need to be selected, edited, and submitted, maybe sometimes up to 10 to 30 minutes after an event. So I'd like to go through here now just kind of my general workflow when I'm uh, doing these kind of events and shooting in general on how to get a good selection quickly and um, be able to edit and submit your images quickly to your clients. So uh, I'm just going to basically go through my workflow here now. So looking at my computer, uh, one of the first things I will do uh, when I am shooting these events is obviously I'll make a new folder for the event. Um, having a good quick process that you do every time at the end of your events when you're, when you're done shooting and you want to dump all your images is really good because a lot of these times you don't have time to think or search or anything like that. So I do this after every shooting. So the first thing I do is I, I create a new folder and then I will name it whatever the day's shooting will be. Um, this one I'm going to use an example from a shooting I did just a little while ago with a friend of mine. So this, we'll call this uh, Epic BMX Shooting with Tsutomu, my good friend Tsutomu. So now what I'll do is I'll, in this folder, then I will create another folder for my RAWs, which are NEF, um, what I always label this. And then from then, I will basically uh, dump all the images into this folder. So to let you know, what I'm doing now, this workflow is when I have time. This is when I'm, you know, I've gone out shooting and I have enough time after the shoot that I can relax and I don't have to worry about putting in images maybe in 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes after the event. For those cases, I will give you a few tips at the end of this video, but for now, I think it'd just be good if we go through our general workflow. So what I've done is I've actually already dumped these images into this file, just to save us some time. And as you can see here, I have a big stack of images. I think it was about 500 here, just from our day of shooting. A lot of different ones, about portraits and some actions and stuff like that. So now that I have these images on my external hard drive, which is where I always put them at first, just in case, the next thing I do is I go and uh, open up my images in Adobe uh, Bridge 2019, the new one. So I'm going to open these up, and here's my folder all ready to go. And I will open this up and then open up my RAW. And now I will allow uh, Adobe Bridge to create thumbnails of my images. This, depending on how many shots you have, this can take anywhere from, I don't know, uh, a couple minutes to 10 minutes or so, if I have like maybe 3,000 photos or so. So at this point, you know, I, I have time, I'm relaxed, and maybe I'm at a hotel, so I'll enjoy a beer, uh, I'll uh, just kind of just chill, watch some TV for a minute, and let this kind of go through. So you can see now, Bridge actually went through this pretty quickly. So I have all my thumbnails here. And um, what I do now basically is uh, just, I will go through and do a quick initial selection of images of just anything that is in focus, could be decent, maybe if I edit it and looks like a good shot. So how I do this is, um, when you're in Bridge, what you can do is you can go through and you can add filters to your images. Now, you can do two types of filters. The first one will be stars. And this would be uh, anything with uh, holding down command and pushing, say, one, two, three, four, or five will give you the corresponding star mark on your photo. Or if you want to add colors, you can do six, which is red for me, seven, which is yellow, eight, green, and nine, which is blue. 
But now if we just hit the 9 again, it'll take that off. And if I hit Command-0, it'll take off the 5 steps. So basically what I first do at any time here is uh, I go through and do a, a large selection. I just anything that looks good. And you can do it here with the thumbnails, but what I like to do is when you're in Bridge, hit the uh, space bar, and it brings it up into full screen mode. And now what I can do is just go through, and instead of having to hold Command, I can just hit the 8, and it goes to green. So if, what I do personally is I'll go through and select anything that I think is decent as green as green to go. Easy to remember, very easy to uh, not get confused here. And I'm actually, I'll do this really quick here. I just go. So, you know, I'll just uh, go through this with anything that looks like it could be half decent and editable. Okay, so basically I just went through 427 images in, I don't know, it took me like maybe three minutes, three or four minutes, and I picked out 39 images that I liked. I selected them with eight, which makes them green, and uh, now you can see over on the side here under my filters, I have labels, and I have 39 images that are green. So now what the cool thing is that I can do here is I can select this, and now all I see are the images that I've selected green. All I've seen, all I see now is my first selection, and uh, all the other images are now hidden from me, and I don't have to worry about them. Makes things a lot less complicated now when I want to go through and do my second level of selection. Um, I don't have all these other images on the screen, and it just uh, really allows me to focus on the ones that I really want to see. Now. Uh, so what I've done is, like I said, a real general selection. Anything that might be in focus, maybe things that uh, you know I've been asked to do and stuff like that. So it's just quite a lot of images are selected here. Um, a lot of times after an event, I still need to submit all my other images. So these other images will be the ones that I've selected now. So it makes things a lot easier in the long run for me with my workflow. So I like to have this real big selection at first. Sweet. So now that I have my first selection, I'm going to go through and do my second level of selection like I just said. And in this way, what I do is I will use the, the stars now and add a second layer of filter or label onto my images. And again, I'll go full screen and I'll go through and just look at all the images one more time. And, you know, not, okay, so... This image here, I remember Stomu really wanted me to get this shot, so I will hit five and add five stars to this. Okay, this is, uh, yeah, I like this angle. It's good, five stars. You know, you can do any kind of system here that you want to do. This is just how I do it, uh, but I've done this for literally hundreds of events, and I find this system to be really quick and easy to remember for myself. Now, I have two kind of similar images here, so I'm just going to hit them both five star. Decide later. Again, these are two really similar, but I think I like that one better. You know, I'm just doing this really quick for the video right now. Uh, cutting down on excess. So let's, I like how the bike is coming out here. Um, straight head's better than the cocked head. I like this one better. Um, that one's better. That one's better. And again, all I'm doing is cutting down on the images that I have to work on at the moment. So I got a lot of similar images and this is where I can really you know take a quick look at which one's better. Kind of like how his jacket's flying in this one. And don't quite like that one. That this is huge. Sure. So yeah. So now I'm taking the 39 images. Uh, I think it's under ratings here, yeah. And I've added another level of filtering onto them. And broke it down to 14. So this is a much more manageable amount of images for me to deal with in a quick time after an event. Um, I'll go into it a bit more in a second, but basically, for say a Red Bull event, I really only need to submit maybe 15 to 25 images after a day. Um, so being able to break down your shots and go through it like this and bring that say 400 shots down to 14 in geez, I've been talking a lot, so maybe in five ten minutes, it really helps your workflow a lot. So now, this is not my final, final selection, though. 
what I will do is one more layer of, of selection on just my best, best images and the ones that I would really send off to the client right away. Things that might be used for a web article, uh, sent out to media. If it's Red Bull, it'd be under their content pool, which is a, a thing they have for media to pick off images. And this only has to be the best of the best. So as you can see here, I do have several similar images. But what I want to do first is actually select them all and now open them up in Camera Raw. I use Photoshop sometimes, but a lot of my initial edits I do um, in Camera Raw. And I'll show you why, just real quickly. Uh, one thing I really like about Camera Raw, and I could probably do a video on this alone, so I'm just going to do this really quick, uh, is as I'm shooting during the day, like I'm just going to, I don't know, do a bunch of random stuff here. It's not going to be very amazing. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, we got some of that. Can add a bit of my fish eyes, not the best lens in the world. I'm going to add a bit more of that. That's cool. Sure. So now we've done all this stuff, and I'm going to crop this a little bit too, just for the fun of it. And the cool thing about a lot of shoots that you'll do is really the lighting doesn't change all that much during the day. And with this camera raw, now I'm talking about this because in a lot of events, after the events, speed is really necessary. So, you know, if you want to go into your images and open them up in Photoshop one by one, edit them that way and spend an hour or two on each image or even more, as some people do, amazing, all the power to you. I ain't got time for that. You know, after an event, I got to get this stuff done and out. I want to go have dinner. I want to have a beer. I want to hit the onsen. Uh, and I can't spend two hours per image or even half an hour an image. So what I love about this is I can do my initial edits here, select my image, hit Command A. It'll select all the other images I've selected. Hit Alt uh, or Option S. And now it brings up this Synchronize window. And I can go through basically and just pick everything that I want to have it synchronized. Right now, I'm going to take off the white balance because I really cranked up uh, the white or the um, I made it really warm in that image. And otherwise, I hit OK. And now this program is just going to go through and add those edits onto all my other photos. Oh man, oh man, this saves so much time, uh, especially when you're going through an event and maybe the lighting is all the same, like I said, uh, and it's really you're going to be doing the same edits to every image anyways. This helps so much. I used to spend literally hours editing each and in every individual image from, say, an FMX event, something like that. This now takes me literally 20 minutes. It's so great. So now what I would want to do uh, at this point then is go, okay, well, hey, this actually, this edit looks pretty good. This is not bad. Maybe I want to, I don't know, I'm just going to random stuff, but I'm going to drop the highlights a bit on the ground, on the wall. Uh, pop down to here. Whoops, went up a little bit too much. Again, I'm going to drop a bit of highlights. Maybe I want to add some more clarity. So now what you can do is you've done your base edits, but now you can go through to each image and refine it and fine tune it as you like. Again, it doesn't take that long. You're playing with sliders and all that kind of stuff. Any major edits that I would need to do from here, maybe I want to, uh, really, the only thing I would do in Photoshop for these, for personal shootings would be maybe erase some things out of the background, uh, some garbage or something like that. But for, say, a Red Bull shoot or other shoot where the photos are going up to the media, I really tend to not erase things. It's a bad habit to get into and uh, you can get in a lot of trouble. So really, everything I would do in Photoshop for the most part for these event shots, I can do right here. So then once I'm done all my edits, I will say, oh, I should mention, one good thing is while you're in this program, you can also affect the filters that you've already put onto the images. So now I have two images here, same spot, same shot basically. I don't need to submit both of these shots to my client. So what I would do here then is go, okay, I pick which one I want. Um, I like his hand movement here. I don't know. So now I can hit Command-8. I can take that off. I can even go in here and hit this little no sign, take off all the stars. So what that does now is when I hit Done and I open up the images again, I still have my filters on here. That image that I just deselected is now no longer in my selection. So as you're going through and doing your editing, you can then also put on another layer of deselecting your images. And maybe you have two like I had that are similar. Pick one, leave the other one. Okay, now for my final basically layer of selection, what I like to do is go through and take these five-star images 
And the ones that I really, really want and want to submit to my client at the end and the best, best images, I will now put those as one star. Number one for the best, easy to remember. Five star restaurant is really good too, but you know, I like number one for the best. So what I'll do is, um, I can do this again in the full screen, no problem at all. But now that I have such a small selection, I actually end up using uh, this thumbnail viewing mode so I can get a real sense of all the images I have, the overall feel of the, the final image selection. So what I'll do here is the first image, this is the only one like that I have like this, so I like it. So I'm going to hit Command 1. And now what I've done is I've taken that out of what I have here in my filters. So what I want to do is actually select this one star filter and bring it back just so I can see all of what I have and uh, go from there. So now this one, yes, I want this one as well. These next two are very similar. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll select with the command. I'll hit click and I can see I've selected them both. Hit command B and now I can bring them up into a full screen. Take a really good look at it. If I want, I can even super zoom in to full and see, yeah, whatever. My uh, fisheye is not the best lens in the world. Um, come back out. But the, as far as this body and the shadow, I prefer the one on the left here. So I am going to come back out. I want to keep the one on the left, so I'm going to select that as one. Go through again, and uh, I like this one with the bush more on this here. And always good to have horizontal and vertical shots. I think I prefer with the sunglasses on here with this lens. So that's one. Uh, that's cool, and that's cool, and that's cool. Yeah. So then I unclick the filter with the five stars, and there's my final selection. These are the only images that I will submit right away. And, you know, it's really easy. Now with Adult Bridge, so what I used to would do is, you know, open everything one at a time into Photoshop, edit it, save it into another file, do it all that manually. And even, even if I didn't actually have to edit the image, I would still have to open my raw image in Photoshop and then save it as a JPEG. I didn't know how to do it automatically. But the cool thing with Bridge is what I can do is I can hit Command A, select all my images, come up to my tools, go to Photoshop, and I can go to, come up to my image processor, and it'll, it'll now load up Photoshop for me. And now this little window will come up, the image processor window. So what I can do is I can select my folder, external hard drive, my fake external hard drive. Here we go, and the NEF. Now, I do not have to make another JPEG folder for it. It will make it for me when it does this. So I just hit open because I want it to put the JPEG folder in here with my uh, raw folder. So I hit open. If needed, I can do uh, resizing of the images here automatically. So some, some clients, they don't want the full size JPEG right away. They want it for the web. So I, I can hit that it does uh, 3000 by 3000 here. And I can also add um, some sort of uh, compression here if I want. But I usually just leave that at 12 and I don't do any uh, resizing for my own stuff. I want to keep that at the biggest possible. But now I run. And what Photoshop will kindly do is open up the RAWs and then convert them into JPEGs and save them into the file that I have selected. This alone saves so much time and it's so great especially when you do need to re-adjust uh, the size of the images and it does it all nice for you and automatically. This is so great. I love it. Automation is awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to let that go through. It'll take a second. It's not the fastest process, so if you do have a lot of images that you're doing, uh, at least with my computer, I have a, a rather old computer. So now what I'll do is I will go back to Bridge. I will go to my folder here open up JPEG, and there you go. And now I have my JPEGs all uh, ready to go for my clients. And often what I'll do is I will go to the folder. Let's just go here. Boom, 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 external hard drive. And I will even just go through here and double check the images. Full, full size on my screen, not in bridge, just because I seem to like the there's no compression here. It looks really nice when I look on it this way. And that's great. And then I, you know, copy these to a USB, email them, do whatever I need to do, and I'm good to go. And that's uh, basically my whole workflow 
Um, if I wasn't talking and explaining everything, it would obviously take uh, a lot less time. So it's uh, quite convenient. And the cool thing is, you know, if I come back to, you know, come back one day to this file, uh, what Bridge does is it actually makes little files files of this information. So I can always reapply the filters and go through and do it again. And maybe I miss something, so I can go back through these and just do it again and again and again. And it's really uh, extremely convenient, whereas if I have it all written down on a piece of paper, and just trust me, I, uh, it gets confusing. And uh, last year at an event, uh, international surfing event, a friend of mine, he was actually doing this. He had his note out, and he was writing down numbers of his photos. And even though it was 2019, uh, he was doing this. So I assume there's other people out there who don't know this way of doing it. And trust me, it helps a lot. Okay. Now we've gone through my general selection when I have time. Um, there's a lot of things in this process that uh, can take time and can extend the time that you use to uh, select photos and edit them and submit them. So yeah, one thing that I would often do when I'm in a real rush, like for example, uh, Red Bull BC One World Finals in Nagoya. Uh, after shooting, you know, you're crazy, you're up at the stage, you're shooting the winners, you go in the backstage, Shoot a portrait of the winner. He's all excited. It's super huge energy. You go back into your room, sit down, and the lead photographer at the time, Dean, goes, I need images in five minutes. I need this, this, and this in five, five to ten minutes. Because someone is asking him for those images, and uh, I just take him 3,000 photos. So realistically, if I, you know, I have used XQD. It's fast. I have a really good, pretty good setup here. Downloading two or 3,000 photos to my hard drive, loading them up into Bridge, and then dealing with all that, uh, it takes time. That alone would probably take 15 minutes. Um, if I have time, you know, that's when I have a beer, that's when I have a shower, that's when I chill for five minutes and just relax. Uh, but after these events, you don't have that time often. So one thing you can do uh, that I've done in the past is selecting straight off of your card. So now that I've got the card in there, what I can do is, in the same way that I selected off the external hard drive, Without spending the time to dump the images onto my external, I can now go to the original card on my uh, on my card reader and do my selection right off of here. Now this is uh, a little risky. It can get a little confusing uh, when you have multiple cards and multiple folders from a day. You can get a little confused. So what I would normally do is like we're just going to do random selections here. Boom, 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 boom. This is totally not how I would do a selection, but anyways. So I have these four images. I select them. Now I do need to get these images onto my hard drive because I don't want to actually edit them and all that stuff on my card. That's just a little bit too risky for me. So what I'll do is I'll select the ones that I have using the filter, go here, and I'll copy them to a folder on my external hard drive. All it's going to do is copy the ones that uh, I've selected. So let's do a new folder here. So select from card. And uh, make another one for my raw, so I don't get too confused. Oops, and -E F. And there you go. And I would go through, without spending that 15 minutes dumping the images, I would go through on my card and do the quick selection, that first you know, 60, 60%, 50% selection, and just get the images I want on my external hard drive as fast as I can, and then go from there. This will save you a good amount of time, but if you're not used to it, it can be a little confusing, especially when you have, like I said, multiple cards and multiple folders inside your cards, if you've just shot two or 3,000 images in a day. So another thing you can do is actually use a secondary program to run a JSON with Bridge uh, while you're do for doing your selection. Um, if you find that maybe your uh, bridge isn't showing your previews fast enough. I found at one point with an older bridge program that I was using, uh, the, the initial thumbnails were not showing very quick and it was very long and tedious and I was rushing and it was kind of a pain in the ass. So I decided to try another program to work adjacent with bridge and that would be the photo mechanic program here. It's not free. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs, but it's a good program. So I go through here and I go to new window. It brings up my all my files. I go to my external, go down to my fake external hard drive, open up my epic shooting with Stomu, 
and I open up my NEF. Now the cool thing about this is I don't need to let it load and I can go basically through all of these, you know, right away. You know, I didn't wait even a second to letting these load and they basically load instantly. So this program is really good for working with a lot of raw files quickly and doing your selection. Cool thing is I can uh, go through and select a couple different things here, different colors for whatever I want, you know, and make my selection. I usually just do eight, I'm used to it, and blah, blah, blah. And then as I go back to bridge, what it should have done, let's see, is, So now you see here, these are just random selections I made in my uh, photo mechanic, but I've it, it creates a file that the bridge can read as well. So if you want, you can go, while your thumbnails are loading on your 2,000 images or 3,000 images in your file that you've put onto your computer from your day, you can let those images, the thumbnails load, and go through all the images and make your selections with photo mechanic, and that'll actually then be uh, you can see them in bridge as soon as you're done. So this is actually something I've done a couple times to save me some extra time having the images load in bridge. Saying that, um, depending on your setup, I have an older setup, and depending on which bridge you use, uh, bridge has gotten a lot better, so you might not see much of a difference with this, but you know if you're starting out and you don't have the, the greatest and newest thing in the market, uh, you might want to look at this program and see uh, if it helps you a quicker selection with your heavier raw images. Now, one thing that I really like about Photo Mechanic, which I'm going to show you now, is with a lot of events that I do nowadays, uh, say like recently with the Red Bull Ice Cross that we did in Yokohama, you can see a video here of me shooting it. Um, what you see is me looking at my camera after the action's gone by. And I'm not just looking at the images. What I'm doing is I'm going through and uh, locking any images um, that I feel would be really good. It's really easy to do. There's usually a button on the back of your camera, a little lock key, and you just hit that. It'll physically lock the image on your memory card. So now, what we've done, what I do is um, I have Photo Mechanic open. I'm going to close this window. Actually, I'm going to close everything here. The Photo Mechanic is still running. <clears throat> I'm going to insert my my card and I'm gonna get this stupid one here but what I get here is from photo mechanic they're ingest now the really cool thing I can do here is copy locked photos only you can do lock photos and unlock photos that'd be everything or lock photos only or copy unlock photos only so I'm gonna select, select locked photos only pick my destination go boom so hard drive Make another one, so this is uh, so locked images. And I'll do just to this, F, open, and we're gonna do the ingest. So now what it's doing is, it's going through and finding the images that I locked during the day and only downloading those images. So like at something like the, uh, the Red Bull Ice Cross, the races are really quick when they go by, but I do have a minute or two in between races to look at the images and lock them. Now, what this does is it saves me time downloading the images, it saves me time doing my initial selection, and it allows me to just jump right into my second layer of selection. So we go back here, we got locked images, NEF, and it gives me a dated folder uh, for the images, and now here are just the images that I thought were good from that day. Uh, this literally saves so much time. Um, the only problem is uh, some events, things are happening so quick and so frantic that it's hard to lock your images as you go. Um, and you don't want to miss shots because you're trying to lock images of what you've just taken. So use this as you can, as your shooting allows. But if you do have maybe a minute between each point of action, maybe each race, each runner running by, and you really do... Uh, have that extra 30 seconds to a minute to find the images, look at them, and do a quick selection like this on your camera with these locked images. Using a program like uh, Photo Mechanic where you can just download the locked images is so good. Um, I had all the international photographers uh, a couple years ago at one of the air races 
basically insist that I do this because it saves so much time. Basically, as I'm talking to you, I can now just do everything I just did that took 15, 20 minutes with downloading and selecting and everything like that because I did it on site and it saves so much time. So yeah, that's the video. It might be a bit of a long one, but I hope it's, you found something in here that, uh, that helps you out with your shooting and makes your job easier, your clients happier, your workflow flow faster, and just your organization of images even better. Um, I know there are other programs you can use to do this sort of selection, things like Lightroom and that obviously have that as well. This is just what I was taught and what I use in my daily workflow, even when I'm not uh, shooting an event, if it's just a fun shoot, this is how exactly how I'll do a, a selection afterwards. Um, and again, the more you do this, the better you get at it, the more it becomes second nature and you don't have to think about it. And the faster you get and um, the easier your job is and the more money you can make. <laughs> so uh, yeah, cheers. Hope you liked it. Uh, like the video if you did. Uh, comments, questions in the uh, below the video here. I'm up for anything, so hit me up. Cheers. Thanks.